Alice Walker's everyday use uh, also illustrates the importance of characterization in Southern fiction. Um, you have probably one of the best, most interesting character sketches of Mama. It's a self-sketch, in fact, uh, that that I've read in in years. Uh, it is she is a a type of person that you don't meet every day, but you've probably met somebody like this before. Some some woman who just embodies this incredibly strong spirit, this um, ability to survive and endure and, and, and all of those things which are just amazing. Um, and also uh, unembarrassed, unashamed, unabashedly common folk, um, which uh, she's not the least bit uh, pretentious. Her great dream is someday to be on Johnny Carson. Now, now Johnny Carson is no longer the host of the Tonight Show. He died several years ago. Then it went to Jay Leno, and now I don't know who it is. Maybe it's Jimmy Kimmel. I don't know who it is. Um, uh, but <laughs> anyway, her great her great dream was to be one day on Johnny Carson on the Tonight Show, be interviewed and whatnot. And that's fine. It's kind of humorous. It's kind of funny, but. You know, I think she'd make a good uh, a good guest, but um, it illustrates the importance. And so, uh, D. Uh, Wangero and her her, her uh, significant other, whom Mama calls Hakima Barber, which um, you know that can't be his real name, and he's not a barber, but he has kind of an African name. Uh, D. has given herself an African name, uh, and then you have poor little Maggie that Mama's always having to pick take up for she's the one that always gets the short end of the stick she's the one that gets the last uh, the leftovers uh, all the time um, I, I want you to take a moment and kind of think about this I'll make this our discussion question too um, you know what do you think the title is trying to convey obviously we've got a quilt here that's a family quilt and uh, it's very important as a symbol of course for the family it is sort of this living breathing thing and uh, Dee wants to put it in a museum or put it up on a wall and show it to people like it's some sort of a sort of, sort of a history artifact whereas uh, Maggie will keep on using it and adding to it and all those kinds of things but what do you think is meant by everyday use we'll, we'll, we'll hone in on that do a little thinking about that because I think that's an important thing people always overlook the uh, the titles of things I don't know why I mean authors think a lot about what kind of title to give a work and people just kind of just glide on by it and never think much about it it is clearly a story that seems to be about heritage in some way, right? And, of course, Mama's point at the whole thing is you have a heritage and you're running away from it because you find it embarrassing or you find it less than totally enlightening and you've gone off to college and you hang out with all of your intellectual friends and whatnot and they've all told you that you need to be more enlightened and that we need to get out of the of the country and we need to get out of the sticks and we need to get with the times and so she steps out of the expensive car with her expensive sunglasses and her expensive outfit and uh, you know, even even Maggie goes, ooh, right? When she sees her, it's like, I don't even recognize this girl as my sister anymore. Who is this person? She's reinvented herself, and Mama keeps telling her, now, you, you may not like who you come from, but this is who you come from, and you're going to have to come to terms with that. So there, it's about heritage, and, 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 and uh, but Dee's sense of heritage is this kind of classroom, academic, learned idea about heritage, and it's not necessarily real I guess I don't I don't know you make of it what you will but mama's got something to teach her there that that she's never quite learned or she needs to relearn uh, and be comfortable with who she is instead of trying to sort of reinvent who she is on the other hand though um, isn't D somewhat correct about this uh, she makes a, a, a pretty good argument and says well now I, I, you know my name, my last name, my, my, my so and so and so, these are all these are all English names. And you know, our people, when they were brought from Africa against their will, had African names. So if I retain an English name, I'm retaining a vestige of what was placed upon me and my ancestors by force. Um, Mama doesn't address that. She says basically her view of it is I don't really have time for that kind of stuff. It is my name. It's who I who who it's the name I was given when I was born, and it was given to be my by mother and by her mother and so on and so forth. And this was something that we did by choice, 
and it's part of who we are. We're not African, we're African American. And that's something different from being just, you know, Caucasian American, for example, or Hispanic American, but it's also different from, from being African. You know, and I think this whole question of identity and heritage is, is, is a very important part of the story. And I think Mama's argument, without being this obvious about it, is we're unique. We're not, we're not something else. We're not somebody else. We're who we are, and we need to be okay with that. Um, clearly, it's a story with a strong matriarchal figure, of course. But one of the things that I think you need to kind of not overlook here is, again, we started off this whole lesson with me making fun of rednecks because I'm white and southern and male, and it's it's okay to make fun of your own your own bunch of folks. She's doing it here and saying, isn't it funny that we, Alice Walker, have among us some of the most interesting, delightful, wonderful people in our families, and yet we go off to college, we, Alice Walker here, get an education and somehow become enlightened, progressive, African-American young women, only to come back and just completely trash our real culture and our real heritage and our real families. Why are we doing this? Don't do this, and don't we look like fools when we do it? Um, and again, the best kind of Southern humor, self-effacing making fun of ourselves, poking a little fun at ourselves. And what's the point behind doing that? To constantly remind us about how foolish we sometimes are so that we won't quite be so foolish so often. And again, it's a moral underpinning, self-awareness. And that's an important moral value that, that is in this story and in a lot of other Southern stories. Not all Southern stories have moral underpinnings, but a lot of them do to the humor. I've got one other thing that I want you to... Uh, to, uh, to do here. I'm going to give you an opportunity for extra credit. If you will send me an email and uh, a separate email from your quiz and in that separate email from the quiz if you will describe the picture of the gentleman in the pickup truck on the first uh, slide, first audio commentary of this lecture, the guys in the redneck swimming pool, just to show me that you were paying attention Five extra points for a quiz. No, I'm sorry, I'll make it ten. We'll make it ten extra credit points for a quiz, okay? Send that off to me. Make sure you send it off uh, separate from your quiz, okay? Separate from your quiz. Send me two emails, and it's due by Wednesday evening as well.